Hello everyone, Nicola here from the Medina Soft Marketing Team. Once again, welcome to Bonita Days 2018. This multi-day webinar series will bring together a community of users, customers, partner integrators, and technology partners. So over the course of these next three days, you have opportunity to attend short bite-sized webinars that will cover different topics such as digital transformation, the cloud, artificial intelligence, blockchain, and, and other topics. These immersive online events will be hosted by our A-list team led by our CEO, some of our R&D managers, tech evangelists, and specialists from other technology companies. Um, some of the other webinars that you can take part in starting tomorrow are from our technology partner DocuSign, but also from our um, continuous integration module and covering topics on the cloud. Um, Thursday is reserved for webinars on artificial intelligence and blockchain. So please feel free to visit our website, um, see the times of these webinars, and to apply and register. We invite you to all to actively take part um, by submitting any questions that you might have in the chat window um, located at the bottom of your GoToWebinar dashboard. And our webinar hosts will try to answer as many questions as possible. So moving on to today's webinar, um, the title is Revolutionizing the User Experience Through Digital Transformation. And your host is BonitaSoft CEO, Mr. Miguel Valdez Faura. So without further ado, I would like to welcome Mr. Miguel, and I hope that you all enjoy our Bonita Days. Thank you, Nico. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me just also switch on the, the camera. Nico, can you validate that the camera and uh, the slides are working? Validating, confirming, everything seems good. Perfect. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining. As Nico was saying, you know, we have an exciting content for the next uh, two days. Uh, you know, as, um, as we just highlighted, uh, that we're going to have some really hands-on sessions on some innovation that we are, um, you know, uh, working for a, for, for a while uh, at Bonita Soft, but also uh, with some of our, our key technology partners that are going to be demonstrated tomorrow and the day after. Uh, but today I wanted to provide, a, a, you know, a high-level overview also of what is our vision um, in everything that relates to user experiences, uh, how that relates with digital transformation, and of course the relationship between those topics and business process management, because uh, some of you know us uh, mainly as a, as a BPM vendor. So what is the link between BPM, user experience, and digital transformation? That's, that's the topic for, for today. Um, as Nico said, uh, don't hesitate to, you know, while, uh, while I'm speaking to, you know, to just to, to uh, ask any question you may have on, on the chat. And at the end uh, of my presentation, I'll, I'll pick some of the questions and I'll try to provide, uh, you know, answers to that. So here we go. It's working, yeah. So uh, I'm going to start by uh, talking about BPM, no? Uh, before going a little bit deeper into digital transformation user experience. So how that relates to BPM. And I would like to start by the kind of projects that we have been uh, doing or seeing on the BPM space for a year, for years now. And, uh, and uh, if we are honest, the majority of the projects that we have seen in, in the last 10 years uh, in this industry uh, are usually related to cost reduction and uh, ways to improve efficiency in organizations. So they are usually also about uh, improving the margin and making people more uh, effective. Uh, and that's great. Don't get me wrong. Boy, those are great projects, and we're going to continue to see and, and, and be involved in those kind of projects. But um, it's not enough. You know, uh, if you really want to differentiate, and that's what we are seeing with uh, uh, some, some key customers, if you really want to make a difference in your market, uh, um, just uh, improving operational efficiency or effectiveness is not enough. So uh, we need to be working more and more on strategic projects. And those strategic projects are about making things different. Uh, those strategic projects are about uh, thinking a little bit more ab uh, about our customers, providing to them better services, um, uh, platforms, tools, offerings. And uh, so this is uh, what some uh, analysts call, you know, a strategic digital transformation versus operational digital transformation, which was more, as I mentioned, the kind of project that we, that we saw in the past. So um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about those kind of projects, the, the ones that are serving uh, uh, our customers and creating new business opportunities. And I wanted to start the presentation by uh, sharing with you, you know, uh, this Google uh, trainer in which, uh, you know, I was, uh, I wanted to, to, to see the evolution of uh, 
some of those keywords that we're going to use in these presentations. So, of course, business process management in red, digital transformation in blue, and then you have user experience and customer uh, satisfaction. And, you know, the, the, some of the, the takeaways here is that uh, we can see that VPM has been a, a kind of flat for the last years, while on the other side, of course, digital transformation start to pick up uh, end of 2015. And we'll see here, uh, you know, the difference in terms of uh, interest, uh, people searching those kind of terms. But, you know, uh, at the same time, when, and while everybody's talking uh, mainly exclusively about digital transformation, we see that topics like user experience or topics like customer satisfaction are like five times, uh, creating five times more searches uh, on the web. And that's uh, really a constant from for the last couple of years. So, um, yes, digital transformation is important, uh, uh, but, you know, user experience and customer satisfaction is something that has been uh, really on the head of everyone for a number of years. And uh, so we think we need to try to make a better effort and, uh, uh, in terms of understanding why, uh, how we can help uh, uh, to improve those kind of those kind of topics. And that's that's what we are seeing discussing with uh, some of our customers is that more and more people are even changing the way they operate their business. And hearing more and more the term customer obsessed operating model as a way to define the way people are defining their strategy. It's so, like we think uh, with our customer first and how we can deliver to them better value. Uh, so they are happy, so they renew, and so potentially we can uh, sell them uh, more uh, products or services. No, so uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be discussing about about that. But you know, I think what thing was important to note is the difference between uh, the traction on digital transformation versus customer satisfaction or user experience. Uh, if you go a little bit deeper into the definition of digital transformation and the link between that and a uh, uh, user experience or customer experience, and then uh, we'll see the link also with BPM. Uh, I like to, to highlight. I, I like to use this slide uh, uh, that is coming from a, a study made by MWD Advisor. Uh, it's by Neil, um, in which uh, basically the uh, MWD asked the different uh, executives in different uh, companies what was their definition of digital transformation. So just make sure that uh, we all have the same understanding. And uh, you know the conclusions are really interesting because uh, of course. What happened is that uh, everybody had a partial view of what digital transformation was. So if you ask uh, to people in the, uh, the head of human resources, here is going to be really interested on uh, internal processes, uh, employees, and how we can uh, change the ways we discuss with employees uh, to detect risk, uh, to make sure that we, we, can, uh, we, we can detect promotion opportunities. But it's more about the internal. On the other side, if you discuss with the VP of marketing or the CMO is going to be more about the external uh, processes, uh, discussing with prospects, with existing customers, how we, how we can uh, improve the way uh, we engage with them. And the reality, and so far if we go through operations or products, but the, the key message here is that digital transformation is, um, is how you're going to make significant change in your organization that is impacting all those topics. Whatever is internal, employees, whatever is external, uh, customers, uh, prospects, uh, partners, uh, and of course, people, how the knowledge is exchanged, and of course, processes. Uh, so this is, this is the key definition of, uh, of digital transformation, is, uh, this is the, where uh, you need to think it as a, as a strategic level. And uh, what we see here is that uh, two, the, two of the most important topics is uh, uh, how we better engage with uh, employees and how we better engage with customers. So this is the link, uh, of course, that we're seeing uh, with, uh, with the user experience. No? So the digital transformation is about uh, embracing a positive change uh, to better serve either our employees or our customers. So, uh, but of course, we're going to need some kind of technology or platform to support those kind of projects. No? If we want to tackle uh, digital transformation projects to better serve the customers or to better serve our employees, we're going to need to, to, to use different technologies. And uh, when we look to, again, uh, Google Trends to see uh, some of the, uh, uh, the trendy technologies those days, and I compare that with uh, business process management that we saw in the pre previous slide that was kind of flat in terms of interest. Even if it's kind of flat, when you compare BPM to things like low code, when you compare that to things like application platforms that are usually the ones that are uh, being used those days to refer like, okay, the way to build uh, applications, uh, you know, to tackle your digital transformation initiative, we see that BPM is actually way more popular than a low code or application platform. Uh, so I really believe that there is a big opportunity for us, the BPM vendors and BPR, BPM specialists, to jump on this opportunity and to consider a new generation of BPM platform 
that is going to uh, help to tackle digital transformation projects with a main goal to deliver better uh, user experiences. Again, whatever those are for customers or for employees. And uh, this is exactly what uh, we are seeing in terms of the, the market trends and uh, how the market is converging. So, uh, you know, we started here, you know, in the BPM market, and we see that this market is uh, still growing. Uh, here is in, in billions of dollars. Uh, and we see, we see uh, also the key uh, goals uh, that are pursued for people acquiring technology based on the BPM market, so the cost reduction, operational efficiencies that we, that we just described before. We see this new market, the low-code application development market growing, uh, especially for the last two years and a half. Uh, of course, inside this market, we have also some of the, the BPM uh, space in there because some of the low-code uh, platforms are, are based on, uh, on BPM technology. Uh, but we definitely see this one growing even faster than the traditional BPM market. Uh, with different objectives for people selecting those kind of technologies. It's more like speed, uh, making sure that everything uh, can be designed uh, graphically, especially the user interfaces. But the reality is that we, ref we definitely see those two markets converging. And those, those two markets are converging into what is going to be potentially called digital business platform market or digital transformation platform market. Um, this is not just us, this different analysts also in the market uh, validating that trend and also, of course, some other VPN vendors. And uh, this is a definitely bigger market. Um, so, uh, and this is the market in which uh, we are not only talking about operational projects. This is the market in which we are talking about uh, uh, strategic projects, projects in which uh, user experience is key. There is a still process automation, but we're definitely focusing on the customers and how we can make those customers happy and how we can uh, uh, deliver uh, and provide new services or offering to to those uh, to those customers. So this is the market in which we are creating new business opportunities, and it's always you know more exciting to uh, create uh, um, you know potentially impact the top line uh, than just working on cost reduction. Uh, what is the Bonita Soft angle on that? How Bonita Soft is going to be positioning uh, into this movement, no? From uh, uh, pure operational projects to more uh, strategic projects. So we have decided Bonita Soft, and we started that three years ago with the release of the version seven of our platform, to really focus on innovative teams. You know that we like to work with uh, development teams, technical teams, to help them deliver those uh, user experiences. And uh, so basically, they're going to be building applications based on uh, on our platform, but with the focus of delivering a better experience, and again, to both customers and employees. And here you have some examples of how uh, some customers are are using Bonita uh, with that in mind, no? And I'm not saying that uh, all the projects that we are seeing those days are strategic projects or projects in which we are working on improving uh, top-line opportunities. Some of the projects still start operationally, for example, here in the telco industry. Uh, but, uh, you know, at some point, people realize when they're working on uh, making sure that we are managing uh, the boarding of new uh, customers more efficiently, that we also thinking about um, the way that we interact with those customers. Are those customers happy? Can we provide pro propose uh, additional things that were not initially on the on the scope of the project? So we are seeing more and more uh, of uh, you know a kind of a change on on the way uh, people are are defining um, expectations and the people are defining priorities. Same on the farm industry in which we are working with people like Bristol Myers into. Um, delivering better experiences to researchers, so they can spend more time on research, less time on reporting and tedious, tedious tasks. And same thing on banking, in which uh, you, can, you can see, uh, you know, traditional loan approval processes or application that are really focusing on delivering better experience to the agents that are going to be managing the loans or the, the customers that are actually going to the bank, uh, or rather than going to the bank using a, a mobile application to, you know, to process a, a, a loan uh, through a com completely digitalized application. So here are just some examples and here is how we're going to be uh, focusing, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the next years in terms of also positioning. Um, we're going to enter now into, okay, yeah, we saw that uh, BPM is evolving. We saw that uh, it's evolving from pure operational projects to more strategic projects. We saw that strategic projects are the essence of digital transformation and this essence is based uh, on a user experience. Uh, what are the things that I think we need to still improve in this market to make sure that BPM is really compelling as a platform to, sell, to serve those kind of projects, right? 
And it's, it's going to be three things. And this is what I'm going to say uh, the, the rest of the presentation. So the first one is about, uh, OK, how we deliver those digital user experience. So how BPM uh, can extend the, uh, the traditional capabilities to make sure that you can build applications that improve those user experience. Second thing, how we do create better or new business opportunities in which uh, we are not working only with one company, but we are able to involve different companies, partners, or even competitors in creating new business opportunities. We're going to talk about that uh, as well today. And the third topic, um, which, uh, which is more, what is the uh, value that artificial intelligence technologies or machine learning technologies um, can bring uh, uh, to people that are operating uh, and are working on digital transformation projects. And for us, this is about uh, complement human intelligence, not to replace uh, human intelligence. And you will see that uh, we're going to talk here about uh, how artificial intelligence can play a role on the continuous improvement of the application and the user experience. So I'm going to spend, as I mentioned, the rest of the presentation working on uh, or discussing about those three opportunities. First of all, um, improving digital user experiences. Uh, I think if we are all here uh, in this webinar, is because we probably we think that uh, our users in general, whatever are, we're talking about customers or employees, deserve a better experience. Uh, and of course, you will see that uh, there are different levels uh, of experience. So we're talking about experience, a lot of people are immediately thinking about user interface. So we're going to see that, uh, of course, is a little bit uh, bigger than that. Uh, but if we start with user interface, um, and we think about the traditional user interface that we, we were putting into the hands of the users uh, for the last 10 years, it looks something like that. You know, we're, we were building BPM applications, BPM projects in which uh, uh, all of us, in which we were talking about task lists, to-do lists, and work list views. And uh, here you have even a screenshot of uh, how, how one of the to-do lists or word lists at Bonita Soft looks like, but in the default portal. But do we really think that this is the kind of user interface that uh, the majority of our users, whatever is a customer or employee, really uh, would like to see? Uh, it can be useful in some situations, especially for people that are, uh, you know, uh, working with different applications that are based on different processes to have this kind of generic view. But the majority of the time, what our users are expecting is a really custom application or custom interface. So they are really expecting something that uh, also works well on a mobile, in which we have graphics, in which we can interact uh, you know, with the process without the knowledge that, that this application is based on process. So this is the kind of views and the kind of user interfaces that people are, are expecting. Again, I'm not saying that this one is not useful anymore. We're going to still see some projects based on that. But uh, you know, the majority of the new opportunities are, are and the, what people want are really applications that speak the language. So mostly the ones that we see on the right side. Um, so what is the kind of freedom that we can provide to development teams to build those kind of UIs? Uh, so uh, we are uh, at Bonita Soft convinced that we need uh, three different options. Actually, the first one, why not? We need to still uh, to provide out-of-the-box uh, generic uh, interfaces, like, for example, the one we saw before, word list or to-do list, in which you can customize a little bit. But of course, you should also provide tooling to create your either web or mobile apps just by drag and dropping um, using a graphical studio. And of course, for people that like to code, you still need to be able to, based on, on, on REST APIs, uh, and, and, you're, and using your favorite JavaScript or HTML5, uh, build the, the, the UI that you want. And even more important, to make sure that you can mix those three approaches. What about a user interface in which uh, uh, some people in the team are working on, uh, on some forms that were built using, a, using a, um, a graphical UI designer, but some of the people are working on uh, some really custom views that are leveraging REST APIs, and some other people are adding a page that is actually based on the, a generic to-do list for admin purposes. So uh, you know this freedom in terms of uh, uh, allowing different people to work with, uh, to compose UIs using different uh, alternatives, and then the ability to mix uh, is what uh, I think makes a, a difference, uh, especially when we're working with, with uh, complex applications and with teams that has different skills. 
as I mentioned before, we have been talking about user interface, but of course user interface is not user experience. It's not equal to user experience. So user experience is a thing that that's probably the Wikipedia definition is the takeaway feeling of a user after the first experience with a digital environment, in our case an application. And, and this kind of um, takeaway feeling is usually a binary one. It's, uh, it's good or bad, it's, it's scrappy or it's fantastic. Um, uh, and uh, and it's, it's more than just a user interface. I usually made the example of, uh, could you imagine a service like Amazon in which uh, the user interface is fantastic and uh, you know at some point you order uh, your book and for any reason the process behind so uh, uh, something, something is not going as expected and you are not delivered on time or when your book is delivered is broken. So even if your user interface was really fantastic and easy to use and it was really smooth to order the book, if at the end your book is broken or is delivered one week late, your experience is going to be good. So the user experience is this, that mix of uh, the nice UI uh, and the link with di between this UI and your operations. And this is what, made, what makes a great enterprise application. This is what I think uh, VPN uh, platforms or new generation of VPN platforms are a good solution for. It's like we're here to make sure that you can tackle big projects or complex projects in your organization and that you are able, of course, to make the link between those user interfaces and with those process, business processes, connect the two in a seamless way and, of course, build, build the whole use, using the different tooling capabilities of the platform. This is um, what, what, we, what we try to do at BonitaSoft, as I mentioned, for the last three years. This is what we call internally a leading application. So there are applications in which uh, the three layers that are um, uh, composing an application are truly separated, the user interface, the business data, and the processes, uh, but they're still connected. So you can make changes in each one of those components without impacting potentially the others. No? So this kind of uh, uh, flexibility is also the one that allows you to uh, make sure that you can go from version 1 to version 1.1 to version 1.2, uh, which brings us to another important topic when we talk about uh, using a BPM platform for building applications that target uh, better user experience, which is the continuous delivery. Uh, of course, you're not going to get, uh, you're not going to deliver the, the, the right application just in version 1.0. Uh, so what are the tool, what are the tools and the and different capabilities that uh, are going to allow you to do this experimentation, get feedback, iterate really fast and do agile development rather than traditional waterfall methodologies. So uh, this is a topic that is important. Uh, as Nicola was introducing, uh, uh, I think it's tomorrow we have a presentation in which we're going to be focusing on how you can easily, uh, you know, set up a Bonita uh, platform into your on-premise or in a cloud environment and how you can deploy, you know, uh, applications uh, on top of that, no? Uh, so this one side of the story, of course, you have the continuous integration part of the story in which uh, you are going to allow development teams not only to make sure that they can uh, uh, deploy new, new applications into, into a, a Bonita platform, but also make sure you can make continuous changes, no? So continuous delivery is usually composed by continuous um, uh, integration and continuous deployment. So tomorrow I think we're going to be focusing more on demonstrating the continuous deployment, uh, but continuous uh, integration is, uh, is key uh, in, uh, in, in all this process. Um, and I'm going to stop here for the user experience part. So what we saw just here was like, okay, yeah, user, inter user experience is way more than user interfaces. We although discussed that user interfaces, uh, you know, are, are, are critical, and we discussed about the different uh, options that uh, we think that we you should you should put into the hands of the development team to make sure that they they have all, all what they need all they need to build those UIs. Also, what is the link between those UIs and uh, uh, and the operational part, the business process part? Uh, so now I'm going to be uh, focusing on the second uh, major opportunity at MC for BPM to embrace digital uh, transformation, which is about expanding the kind of use cases that you are expanding the kind of application that you can build up using uh, using VPN. And of course, I'm going to be talking about blockchain. Um, uh, and you will see why uh, in a minute, because I really, I really think that uh, BPM can boost the adoption of blockchain applications. We'll see that uh, just after. Uh, just uh, sorry if you are really uh, an expert of blockchain, but for those of you that are just uh, beginning with, uh, with the blockchain, 
just here a really simple example to illustrate the concept. So just blockchain is a decentralized uh, technology that allows, uh, uh, for example, in this example, uh, one person to exchange money with another person. Uh, so how it works uh, with the blockchain technology? So basically, this exchange of money is, uh, is a transaction. And this transaction is called uh, a block. This block is actually distributed to the different nodes. As I mentioned, it's a decentralized architecture, different nodes that are participating into this blockchain. Uh, all those nodes need to uh, validate or approve the transaction to make sure that the money is exchanged. And the money is exchanged when this transaction is uh, what is called in blockchain chain to the list of different transactions. The good thing about blockchain is that uh, uh, all the transactions um, uh, you know uh, are final, meaning that you cannot come back from a transaction. What is done is done. And you have, uh, you have the proof that has been done because it's replicated uh, and decentralized into different nodes rather than a single architecture. So this is part of the, one of the key benefits of using blockchain technology. So like the immutability of the transaction that you are doing. Uh, of course, the virtual continuity. If you have a decentralized architecture, um, you know the point of fail. Um, you know it's, it's not the same that when you are deploying in a, in a server, even if it's a cluster. Uh, but of course, with those benefits come some challenges. Blockchain is still a young technology. Uh, there are some issues in terms of regulation, uh, especially that, that the majority of the, the, uh, the blockchain uh, uh, applications are usually public blockchains, like Bitcoin. Uh, there are some issues in terms of energy consumption um, and some issues regarding uh, privacy as well, but the major one is adoption. It's really hard to build blockchain applications those days. Um, so uh, there, are, there, there is a thing called private blockchains that is supposed to um, you know, uh, uh, reduce or, or improve a little bit uh, uh, the way people uh, build a, a blockchain application, which is basically let's decide who is going to participate in this uh, application. So it's not open to everyone, just a, that is going to join with an internet connection. Uh, it's it's, it's, uh, it's close and uh, uh, to a private uh, number of people. Uh, and of course, that that uh, comes with uh, with a lot of uh, benefits in terms of uh, transaction speed, in terms of uh, energy consumption in terms of uh, uh, auditability. Um, but what is the link between BPM and blockchain? And uh, you know, uh, uh, all the topics that we discussed before with uh, the complexity of building great UIs ba based on enterprise grade applications uh, are kind of exponential when you talk about blockchain application. Because in a blockchain application, you, you, don't, you, you not only have one enterprise application, you have as many applications as people or companies that are working, uh, participating in this blockchain. So we're talking here about applications in which uh, different companies, for different reasons, decide, decide to work together. That can be even competitors, you know? There is a, especially, uh, you know, when, when, they, when they need to be compliant with regulation, for example, telco operators or insurers that needs to work in a country together uh, just to make sure that if one customer is uh, uh, resigning uh, his subscription and moving to the competition, this is uh, this is a smooth and, and, and complain with the, with the regulation. So that's an example you know, that we're seeing more and more in which uh, competitors need to work together on building those blockchain applications. And by definition, they don't trust each other. So when there is no trust, uh, you need a technology that, that, that can handle that, and this technology blockchain. But you see the complexity. You need to build as many applications as people are participating into the blockchain. Uh, another example could be uh, people that are decide that different companies that decide to work together to build a, additional value. And I, and I always have a funny story on that. I don't know if, if, uh, if you've uh, recently moved uh, internationally with your family. And uh, you know, I, I did it uh, uh, some months ago. I moved from San Francisco to Paris. And I think that that's been uh, the, the worst you've experienced ever. Uh, you know, uh, you end up dealing with, uh, with uh, six different companies to, mo to move your, your goods uh, because you have a one First company that is helping you to put your goods into, into boxes, another one that is bringing those boxes to the port of San Francisco, another one that is uh, uh, the one uh, working with the ship uh, that is sending that to one of the port, port uh, in north uh, uh, west of France, another one that's going to help you to deal with the customs in France, and then another one that is potentially bringing uh, all this stuff uh, to your apartment in Paris. So. Um, so this is a clear opportunity with different people, different companies can work together building a blockchain application uh, and with delivering a better service, a better user experience uh, and creating new business opportunities. And as I mentioned, 
the, the, uh, the, the key benefit uh, of using BPM and blockchain together is that uh, you know the same thing that apply to building enterprise grade application with one application applies to uh, blockchain application in which you need to diversify the number of applications that different uh, people involved are going to be using. No? So we have a dedicated session uh, on uh, how BPM and blockchain work together um, I think the day after tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be presenting that with one of our technology partners, Stratum, the blockchain uh, implementation. So you're going to see how we, we have been working together uh, and you're going to see Bonita and Stratum in action building blockchain applications. So don't, don't miss that. Okay, so number two, that was how we can create new business opportunities working with new kind of applications. Again, applications in which you have different companies working together. And last topic that I wanted to um, uh, discuss today be before opening for questions is uh, what is the role of artificial intelligence in all that? And in particular, how artificial intelligence can enhance human intelligence uh, in terms of continuous improvement? You know, one of the key things of digital transformation is that uh, you need to work on an agile mode. You need to make sure that you can iterate fast, get feedback. And this is one of the, the things that a BPM platform can, can do for you. Uh, so to, to avoid the tunnel effect. But uh, okay, can we get some uh, uh, external intelligence to detect that something is not working as expected? No? So, so what is the role of artificial intelligence in, in all that? Let me start by what are the more traditional use cases that probably you are seeing uh, uh, in which artificial intelligence can help BPM. Uh, the majority of those cases are related to the process execution. Uh, so uh, probably the, the number one example is that, okay, yeah, uh, at some point based on different historical data and machine learning algorithms or a machine learning intuition, um, make sure that you can create a new instance of a process. For example, uh, a customer support team that at some point, uh, you know, uh, uh, the system automatically detects that this case should be uh, scalated because uh, the customer is becoming really mad and based on different historical data says that this is the right time to launch an escalation process and the system is escalating automatically uh, the case to somebody else. Uh, second example, uh, which is more about, uh, okay, yeah, let's, let's go, for example, to the insurance industry. Based on, uh, you know, uh, the risk assessment of a new customer, uh, you can go left or right into a process execution. Uh, and this is, again, something that we can do based on historical data and the, uh, and the IE technologies. And number three, also really popular is what uh, what is usually called next best action. Let's go, come back to the support um, uh, customer support in which, uh, I don't know, at some point a customer support agent uh, has three potential options to propose to a customer and the machine learning algorithm is basically proposing or suggesting what should be uh, the best action uh, based on those three, uh, always based on, on historical data uh, that we have from the past. Those are the traditional BPM use cases related to artificial intelligence, no? again, during the process execution. Number two, number two a little bit more advanced uh, than that will be intelligent robotic process automation. And I'm not talking here about only robotic process automation because by definition RPA is not that intelligent. You know, RPA is uh, basically at the end a script that is going to replace a uh, a human that is uh, basically uh, adding information uh, into different systems through a user interface, usually systems that are not accessible through uh, APIs. Uh, but intelligent robotic process automation is more about uh, can we have a system that is looking to the process execution and at some point automatically detect that some, ste some step in those processes uh, should be done by a robot, and in that case apply robotic process automation. That's a little bit more um, uh, elaborated uh, of course, a little bit more complex uh, to be done, so um, we're going to see more and more uh, BPM and RPA vendors working together on those kind of technology. And number three, that is the one that I would like to, to, to talk about uh, today, and it's going to be uh, presented in details um, uh, the day after tomorrow by our head of uh, E&D, Nicola, uh, is what we call, and this is our approach and our take at Bonita Soft, what we call intelligent continuous improvement. Uh, so what is intelligent continuous improvement? Uh, so it's always based about trying to make predictions on your process execution goal. For example, let me take the bank loan approval uh, application example. 
So the majority of the banks, they have an SLA in which uh, they need to respect to approve or reject your loan uh, request. So that will be our goal. Okay, yeah. Can you uh, predict uh, that some of the loan requests are not going to be validated or rejected on time? Uh, that could be one of the predictions. And the goal in that case could be an SLA. But even more, can we recommend some actions? Because it, it's, it's good to make predictions, but it's even better to make sure that you can make recommendations. So for example, the recommendation could be uh, if the loan request is coming from this particular region or this particular uh, country uh, and, the, and the person is a uh, male more, uh, that has more than 35 years old, it should be routed to another team that has a better, uh, you know, that, 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 that knows how to handle those, those kind of uh, requests and is usually handled them more efficiently. I don't know, for example, based, on, based again on some historical data. So it could be reroute the activity to somebody else. Uh, so uh, the idea is like you can recommend to act. And those uh, actions uh, is what we call in Bonita either short loop actions or long loop actions. Short loop actions are things that can be done immediately by the operator of, uh, of the Bonita platform. So for example, as we mentioned, task reallocation, assigning the task to somebody else. Uh, you can be a form update. You can add or change or uh, uh, an attribute on your, in your UI. It uh, could be uh, changing a connector. Uh, also adding that to the concept to next best, next best action. Or it could be something that requires, uh, you know, that cannot be done like just in one click. So that's what we call long loop. That could be at some point you need to redesign the process or you need to redesign your UI, or your UI, etc. And the idea is like to make sure that you can measure the impact of those corrective actions. So the idea here is like, uh, can we help the operators that are responsible for, for making sure that the application is working uh, you know, in an efficient way, uh, and so provide a good user experience, that something is not working as expected, make some predictions, recommend some actions, and uh, leverage some of the um, life updates capabilities of, of the platform to make, to make some changes. That's, that's the approach at Bonita Self, and again, uh, there is a dedicated pre uh, presentation about that uh, in two days, in which uh, uh, Nicola, uh, Nicola Chavanol from uh, our R&D department is also going to explain you what are the technology that we are using for that. And you will see that it's quite innovative. Uh, we, are, we are using some kind of uh, variation of traditional process mining technologies uh, to do that. So we're using process mining in a, in a different uh, way that is usually uh, done. So, uh, so if you are interested in artificial intelligence and continuous improvement, don't, don't miss, don't miss this, this webinar. Uh, but we're not going to stop here. You know, when we're talking about intelligent continuous improvement and we're talking about uh, the role of artificial intelligence in applications, we're gonna be, we're gonna, we want to go be beyond uh, uh, the processes. I told you at the middle of the presentation that a great user experience is usually a mix of a right user interface and the right business process, the right operation, and the link between the two. We're currently focusing in terms of artificial intelligence on the business process execution. What about also looking to the user interaction? Uh, what about applying the same kind of technologies and algorithms to see uh, how people are interacting with the application, with the user interface, uh, detect the page flows that people are following, and make the link between uh, things that we can learn from this execution at the user interface level and the process uh, that are behind. No? Those are things that we, we started also to work on, um, uh, and you know we're going to put the two working together while we started with uh, the business process side. It's just, just so to know that, that you have a better understanding of what we are working, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, IE uh, and, and the role not only on processes, but also on the whole uh, application with the, with the end goal of improving the user, user uh, experience. Okay, so let me sum up uh, before we conclude and opening for questions. I think we're perfectly on time. Um, you know what we just so today, and what are the, you know, kind of the, the key takeaways of this presentation? Uh, first of all, we are really convinced the new generation of VPN platforms are the ones that are going to help uh, people to build uh, uh, enterprise weight applications with the goal of uh, delivering a better user experience. Again, whatever this uh, end user is a customer or an employee. The more we're focusing on customers, the more we're going to be targeting also strategic projects but let's not forget the employees. Second, second thing, uh, we really believe that one of the differentiators compared to other low-code platforms uh, is that, uh, you know, when you come from the VPN world and if you get the UI side right, 
uh, a great UX, a great user experience is a mix of the two, right interface and, and, and how this interface is connected to the back office operation, the business process. So I think this, this is why I think VPN platforms are well positioned uh, in that respect. And number three, we really don't pretend uh, to uh, replace uh, human intelligence, uh, especially when we are looking to the execution and the operation of, uh, of those uh, enterprise grade application, but we want to complement uh, on uh, human intelligence, but this um, uh, additional insights from uh, machine learning technology, in our case, process mining, to make sure that we can detect inefficiencies and we can help uh, to this continuous uh, improvement of applications. Those are the, the, the three key things uh, that I uh, just wanted to highlight before uh, opening for questions. And just, uh, of course, um, uh, I'm, I'm a BPN guy, so I uh, potentially I'm seeing BPN projects everywhere. So I'm not saying that BPN platforms are, you know, uh, the solution for all, all, the, all the projects or all the technology or all the challenges uh, when we are embracing digital transformation initiatives. But these are usually, you know, a damn good place to start. Thank you very much. Let me check. I don't know if, there, if we have some questions here. If not, you can still. Uh, oh yeah. So we have questions on the chat. I think. I know. I have questions here on the question section. So that a question about. Uh, uh, let me check that. Oops. You can still see my screen. Yeah, there is a question about which version of uh, Bonita Soft is going to be uh, uh, demonstrated in the following days. So it's, uh, it's going to be the 7.6 uh, uh, version. And this is the one that I think we also um, uh, demoing when we are showing, uh, you know, interaction with, uh, with other uh, technology partner solutions. Uh, I forgot to mention, by the way, that uh, one of the presentations that we have tomorrow in terms of uh, highlighting one of the, one of the integrations we made with uh, another technology vendor is with DocuSign. Uh, really exciting presentation as well and demo in which we're going to show how you can uh, digitalize the whole process, including the signature. So probably you are familiar with DocuSign. So this is the, this is the integration that is going to be demonstrated. I think the, the, the version is, that's going to be used is the 7.6. Nico, I don't know if you have any question on your side. I'm answering all the questions. Excellent. Yes, I'd like to thank you, Miguel, for a great presentation. I do see one more question here from Gustavo asking, what's, what's the advantage of blockchain versus web services? Oh, it's, yeah, it's a different, completely different story, no? Because uh, web, web services is basically something that you're going to use as a point-to-point -point, uh, interaction. So usually we're going to... Uh, for example, you can use a connector from one of the steps of the process that is going to be a web service connector. It's going to just uh, uh, make a call. And behind this web service, you can, you can have any, any system. You, can, you could have a CRM operation. You could have a, a database operation. Uh, when we're talking here about blockchain, uh, first of all, the blockchain technology is, is different. It's, a, it's the technology itself, the platform that blockchain is bringing is a decentralized platform in which uh, you are going to have a, a automatically a, a record uh, of every transaction that is done. And uh, however, the, the, the link between uh, the VPN platform and the blockchain platform usually is going to done also through a connector. Uh, it's not, usually it's not done through a web service connector because the majority of the blockchain platforms are uh, exposing their APIs using REST. Uh, so at the end, it's going to be a REST API call, but it's completely different is that uh, web service is just a, a way to connect with another system. And blockchain is a whole platform, a whole new level of uh, architecture behind that. Hope it's clear. Excellent, yes. And given the time, I think we, we won't proceed to get some other questions in, but I would like to invite everybody to please uh, post any questions that you have. And if you would like to discuss in more detail about any ongoing projects or future goals, um, please feel free to reach out via our contact form. I have entered the link into the chat field. Also, I would like to invite everybody to uh, visit our website for more information on some of the other sessions that we've mentioned during this presentation where you can register for our webinars. Um, I've included also the link to our registration page also in the chat. So just uh, um, to refresh for tomorrow, as Miguel mentioned, we do have a great session with one of our technology partners. 
um, titled Go the Full 100% in Digital Processes with Bonita and Dakishan. This is at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. It's going to be uh, hosted by Sebastian Francois, Head of Business Development and Channels at DocuSign. And after that, at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, we have um, a webinar dedicated to the cloud. So free yourself from infrastructure constraints, embracing the cloud through Bonita, um, held by our in-house technology evangelist, uh, Antoine Matier. So I warmly welcome everybody to come to attend. Thursday, we have another set of two um, uh, webinars uh, focused on artificial intelligence and, as we mentioned, blockchain. So some very interesting topics coming up. Please join us. Um, uh, get the full value out of Bonita Days and inform yourselves on your new journey for your new user experience transformation. Um, once again, I would like to thank Miguel. And again, please feel free to reach out if you have any, have any further questions. So I hope everybody has a good day. And we'll hopefully see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Nico. Thank you. Thank you all for, for attending.